we also had gotten some other very exciting images. So Haley, are you excited about the new images of the Sagittarius A star? I'm so excited to talk about the image of Sagittarius A star that was released earlier this year in May. So folks might remember the state of the art image that was released of M87 star, the supermassive black hole in the nearby giant elliptical galaxy M87. So this was taken by the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, or EHT, back in 2019. So this was a massive scientific achievement because up to this point, only images of stars influenced by the gravity of a black hole had been captured, which is somewhat indirect evidence of their existence. And so while technically we aren't imaging the black hole proper, we are able to capture direct evidence of it in the form of its shadow or the event horizon, which is the central dark blob in this image of M87 star, as well as the glowing dust and plasma that accretes around it. And so if we didn't think that imaging just one black hole was enough, astronomers went and did it again, but this time they pointed their telescopes to the center of our own Milky Way galaxy. And so not only was this an additional feat of observational prowess, it really helped astronomers sort of gain closure on a widely held assertion that there is a supermassive black hole at the center of our own galaxy, giving us finally direct imaging evidence to add to our pile of other clues. So when I mentioned earlier that we only had indirect evidence of stars being influenced by the gravity of a nearby black hole, I'm talking about the black hole at the center of our own galaxy. And so to give you some context, astronomers first started to suspect a black hole lay at the center of the Milky Way in 1918, when astronomer Harlow Shapley observed strange stellar orbits and clustering of stars near the center of the Milky Way. And so later generations of astronomers were additionally perplexed over radio emissions coming from the same location, which pointed to evidence of some mysterious and massive stellar object. So perhaps a black hole? At this point, black holes were just a theory recently posited within the framework of general relativity. And so it wasn't until real-time observations of stellar dynamics conducted much later in the late 20th and early 21st centuries that showed there indeed seemed to be something quite massive exerting gravitational control over these stars, and that these motions could best be explained by the presence of a supermassive black hole. And so we call this black hole Sagittarius A star, the one at the center of the Milky Way. In this GIF, you can see a compilation of observed motion of stars in the center of our galaxy, orbiting a shadowy, invisible object in the center. And so remember, actual observational evidence of black holes remained elusive. This does not give us a picture of a black hole. So earlier this year, several All Space Considered producers and myself were able to attend the Pasadena meeting of the American Astronomical Society, where an entire press session was convened to present and discuss the newly released images of Sagittarius A star. This was so exciting to attend because it provided an in-depth and nuanced understanding of why these images were so important, and also from some of the people who actually did the work. So first and foremost, we learned that Sagittarius A star is a fundamentally different black hole from M87 star. First, Sagittarius A star was a much harder target. It's smaller, so about a thousand times less massive and much dimmer. So this might seem a little funny to comprehend because even though we call black holes like Sagittarius A star super massive, it's still 27,000 light years away, which means the apparent size in the sky is very, very tiny. So combined with its smaller size, the dimmer luminosity, and being quite far away, this presents an additional observational challenge. And so in this image, comparing the first black hole, M87 star, to Sagittarius A star, you can see how the two compare in size to one another and to our solar system. So secondly, Sagittarius A star is very, very active, changing on the order of minutes to hours. Conversely, M87 star was much more stable, with its accreting material taking days and sometimes up to weeks to show perturbations. So that meant there was relatively little difference between imaging sessions of M87 star, but quite a lot of variability in the case of Sagittarius A star. Additionally, the light leaving the black hole is distorted by gas and dust lying between the Milky Way Center and our location here on Earth. And so this creates sort of a hazy effect when trying to get a good image. You can think of it sort of like trying to look through frosted glass at things on the other side. You just can't really resolve it with your eyes. 
So because of these two interferences, images of Sagittarius A star were pretty hard to pin down, and images cannot be trusted at face value to begin with. So this means that some images captured might look weird and wonky, showing structures that maybe aren't really there because they came out blurry due to distortion and variability. And so in order to get around these barriers, the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration uses a few techniques. So one observational and one computational. So first, in order to just capture enough light from these very distant and apparently small objects, the EHT uses very long baseline interferometry, which allows the use of multiple telescopes across the globe to resolve objects in the sky. So the EHT collaboration uses about eight telescopes spanning between the South Pole and Spain at different longitudes around the world. So this allows for constant light collection of the black hole, even as Earth continues to rotate, because multiple telescopes will be pointing at the object at all times. And so what this does is it turns Earth effectively into one large telescope lens. So in order to make sure that the structures and features being resolved by the EHT telescopes were both real and detailed, astronomers had to come up with clever statistical imaging algorithms. This allows astronomers to determine the likeliest structure resolved by the telescope. The model was created from years and years of observing light scattering and images from the black hole and the effect distortion has on them. So millions of simulated test images have been produced via supercomputing in order to build out the robustness of this model. And in the end, the model can be used to deduce the most likely common structure of Sagittarius A star across all the observing nights. So here is an image of Sagittarius A star produced by averaging together thousands of images that were taken by the EHT telescopes and processed using the statistical model. So along the bottom row are four composite images and histograms or bar graphs showing the relative number of images with similar features produced from these simulations and where they fall in the total distribution of all images taken. And so you can see the far uh, left images um, show the bulk of the images that were produced by running them through the statistical model indicating that simulated images do not tend to show non-ring structures, which further indicates that the observed images of Sagittarius A star are reliable. So only a few fall on the right-hand side of the distribution, um, showing things that probably weren't really there. So the results are absolutely gorgeous. And so while they might look like incoherent blobs of golden haze, Sagittarius A star clearly shows an accretion disk, which is the ring in these images. The resolution of the ring can shed some light on the orientation of the black hole. So a slightly tilted axis of rotation relative to our line of sight will result in an asymmetrical ring, uh, which basically means one side of it's going to look brighter than the other. The brighter part being where matter is moving towards us, the viewers, and the dimmer side being matter moving away. So you can sort of start to parse out um, some rotational features. And so the more pronounced the tilt is, the more asymmetrical this brightness or ring feature will appear to us. And since these images clearly show a closed ring, astronomers were able to deduce with the help of the statistical models that the rotational axis of the black hole must be tilted no more than 30 degrees from our line of sight. And so I think these images are such a testament to the collaborative nature of science. So after all, it did take eight distinct telescopes around the entire world, the people power to operate them, the astronomers and data scientists to create statistical algorithms and process them, think deeply about them, and then present them to the world cohesively. This is no small feat by any means, which is why I think Sagittarius A star is worthy of a 2022 look back. Wow, well, that was a very informative segment from Haley. Thank you very much for all of that. Gotta love that Sagittarius A-star image and what it shows us.